if you've ever looked at our boats and wondered if they're heavy or not, they're not. The secret is in the framing, how we ultralight fit these and make them the most efficient ever. Come and check out our full aluminum kits on our website at tbnation.net. So if you were following the series on the last boat, we actually made our first attempt at hand routing EVA foam on a DIY level. Which is pretty good because it empowers everybody to be able to have your boat kind of look like it was done by a professional company without actually having to pay three to four grand to get the foam done. In this video, we substantially step up our game and refine the methods to where we can actually do very, very cool things. Where we go to set out the panels to make this bash tracker pop. We have some new tools coming forth that are gonna help us accomplish this. We'll be going over that in conjunction it made me go back to opening up an old set of skills that I have not used in a very long time. A little rusty, bear with me. After we turf these panels, we just check to see if they fit. Everything needs to work because we're about to go through an obscene amount of things to try and make this stuff pop. And if it doesn't fit here right now and then, it would have all been for nothing. It fits, but it's tight. It'll work though. Now we get to do the fun stuff. We get to actually plan out how we draw the lines. I'm gonna give you a pretty good overhead view of how I do the lines. Last time I tried to do it in my boat, it just didn't turn out that great. The GoPro more or less got all the angles here. We're giving it an inch and a half border all around. I just so happen to have a leftover TV Nation shirt decal. That's an iron-on decal. So I'll be able to cut these letters out and they won't stick to the turf, won't have any problems. So I'm gonna use them as an actual template to form this. This is part of the easier parts because I actually had a template for it. It took a little bit of time to trace each letter and space it up proportionally, but that was fairly easy considering what we're gonna have to do next. After we trace these all out, we darken them in with a line, because what you don't wanna do is be on your router bit and not be able to see the line, and then permanently screw the foam up and not be able to come back from it. Every line we darken in here is gonna be routed out so you'll never see it again. And this is a tool that I think is going to help me pull off this very intricate foam piece. If we can hand route this, and make it look awesome and make it pop, it's gonna be done with this thing. This will give me a lot more control than what I had before when I used that Harbor Freight router. This one's smaller, it's cordless, which is a huge thing, the cord kept getting in the way. I can use this with one hand. I mean, and with most cordless tools, when the bit is on, it's on. When you turn it off, it immediately shuts off. It doesn't just continue to residually spin. So we have a pretty huge edge here. I think with this tool, I can actually pull this off. So how I start it, is I start to outline each letter. And then later on, we're gonna take a wider bit and we're gonna go in there and carve out the internal stuff. This is stuff from Amazon. It's pretty, like, I don't think it's close sell. It's really soft. So in order to make this actually work, we have to burn the edges with a soldering iron. You don't have to do this for all foam. If you get the higher quality foam from our website, it actually routes much, much better. And there's less residual stringy lines to where you can actually tell that it's hand routed. You don't actually have to burn it. In fact, it doesn't like to be burned, but this stuff, you have to burn it. Now that that's done, now we can go to something that's actually fairly easy. As long as you line up you know, a piece of angle or a piece of like a, a very straight two by four, Whatever you need to make a, a line for the router to move generally across, we just go right along across this. This is the easiest part of the whole panel deal. When this was the hardest last time, now we're going like way farther. I'm actually gonna put a Gator Guards logo inside this foam. Now, I, I'm not gonna template that decal out. There's just no way I can do what I did with the TV Nation decal. Decal is much more complicated. So. I had to actually go back in and do some freehand stuff. I haven't freehand copied anything like this in a very long time. So I guess it's good to exercise the brain every once in a while, right? This is Nick from Gator Guards' boat. 
So the Gator Guard decal absolutely had to go on here because Gator Guards is all throughout the boat everywhere. And because TH Marine stepped up in a really major way, we went to set and embroider their logo inside this foam as well. But the bigger thing when I drew those was how the hell am I actually going to be able to pull off routing something that detailed with this little handheld router? Can we even do it? Did I just screw this panel up? It's too late. It's not like I can erase those lines. It's got to happen. It's now or never. Let's see. Okay, so that was terrifying, but I managed to not screw it up, at least not too bad. I tried a multitude of different things, anywhere from cutting into the really soft, intricate edges of it, all the way to using multiple various bits for the Dremel there. And some of it worked, some of it was pretty high risk, but later on I found out that burning it away was the best way. If you can get away with burning like small, intricate edges in with the foam you have, then do that and don't use a Dremel. With the success of this, I got a little cocky and I tried to take on a complete freehand without any sort of even direct line copying of this tracker logo. It's not proportionate. <laughs> so yeah, I probably should have like figured out a way to cut out a template so this came out perfect. But you know, I crossed it with Nick and he's like, oh, it looks, it looks good anyways, just put it in there. So we did. So because we did those side panels, it made the subfloor look that much more terrible. And now we have to make everything match. And I've been following uh, Southern Cooler Co. on Instagram. And they just do the most insane routing jobs for phone. And so if I can even do anything that kind of even replicates that by hand here, then, you know, we'll be pretty good. Here I am doing the border. And then my plan is to run a bunch of cosmetic lines across the mat to kind of give it a sporty finish. I have a little bevel there because I plan to put a drain fitting right there in that section. Doing this on concrete was not the smartest idea, but it was at the only time the only idea I had at the moment, keyword the moment. And that's just because I forgot that I had a piece of aluminum that I could, you know, clamp this thing to. That way I could get actually straight lines with a jig. So after we symmetrically make these lines sound and proportionate, we go ahead and we put it on a table and we mount the jig and the clamps there. And that's the only way you should actually do this. If you're going to run straight lines, have some sort of apparatus there that the router can follow. And, and it's pretty flawless. You do it up and down once that gets rid of most of the threads in the foam. And then if it still looks stringy to you and you're not happy with it, you can go ahead and take the risk and burn it with a soldering iron. The better quality foam you have, like the closed cell stuff, the orthodex stuff we sell on our site, you do not have to burn it. It's much easier to work with as we actually use that stuff for the main deck later, we will show you. But for now, we're committed to this stuff. We're gonna go ahead and finish off the lines we're going to burn all the lines in with a soldering iron, get them all looking pretty good, and then we're going to go install this. This will complete the rod locker in terms of the cosmetic outlay that we want to do.
So, in my personal opinion, considering this is the first time he really went this far, it was a pretty good success. If you followed the rod locker and how big of a pain that thing was to do, um, following it up with those panels definitely made the entire project worthwhile. Good sneak peek at this awesome product we got because a few people really wanted to come in here and help this boat build pop. This is custom made for the live well. It is freaking awesome. I will put the contact information of this person, his company, right down in the description of this video. It is right there in the first pinned comment section or in the description area of the video. It is all there. This thing is awesome. We install it later, further on into the build, but I just want to give you a quick sneak peek at it. Look at that thing. That's full Lexan. It looks fantastic. Next, we got to run the electronics, get the deck on this thing, skin the frame, and make this thing pop, unlike any other tracker out there. Stay tuned, follow the whole series, check us out on our website, check out everything we have to offer, connect with other people, other tiny boats around you. It's tpnation.net.